I want to talk about adding in some perspective to your images. You could have flat images or you could skew, rotate or even transform them. Now, this doesn't get spoken about a lot in many tutorials. And what I'm going to show you, I am using the Elementor page builder, but you could apply this to other page builders as well, especially as we'll be using some CSS on top of some of the styling options that you get. Let's go and have a look at this. Like I said, you could have a page where you've got like a hero banner or a section with images and some text and you want to add a bit of variety because flat looking images can sometimes look a little bit boring and having a bit of perspective or 3D rotation can really spruce things up. So over here we have a headline text and we just got four images. Okay, they are in a row and they are wrapping. There's a bit of a shadow effect going on there, but there is no styling applied other than what you can see on screen. Now you will see a grid background as well. And I've done that just to demonstrate when you do skew or, you know, rotate a little bit, how does that look when you have lots of images side by side? It's gonna help you to appreciate a little bit why I like to use some and sometimes I don't. And I hope it all makes sense. So down here, we have a copy of the exact same images and layout we had above. The only difference is that every single one of these images now has a bit of CSS applied. So in the custom CSS for each image, I've got selector. You could use a class name, but I'm just going to stick selector in here for now. Transform skew white minus five degrees. If I had I'd put a positive figure under a five degrees, it would have gone the other way. And skew X is minus five as well. You can play around with these values and basically you can start to move it. So if that is what the image looked like originally. By adding in CSS, we've now moved it almost looks like in a skew like fashion where it's now kind of stretched. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of this skew effect, because even though you're going to look at it and go, well, it's just kind of done that almost like a trapezium effect. It does stretch a little bit because you're skewing. So over here we have perfect squares. But can you see here you might go, well, they still look like squares to me. There is a bit of a stretch and they are more rectangular than square like you got to trust me on this. OK, and just to help you understand what would happen if you change the values, let's click on this image, go to the advanced tab, go to custom CSS and I'm going to make the Y be a minus 15. Can you see it's gone, come, you know, a bit more skewed upwards. If we get rid of the minus, it would have gone the other way. And if we go to the skew X and I go and add in something like 55, you can see what it's doing. But can you see how it's not in perspective now? It is skewing. And if you're not careful, you're going to end up making a lot of the wording or some of the images not very legible. And it's for that reason I don't like to use skew. Now, don't get me wrong. If you just do some subtle movement like minus five degrees as to what I've done here, you could get away with it. And if you look at it on in that grid, you know, with a bit of a box shadow, you do get that 3D styling effect coming out. So I'm just letting you know, okay, that's just standard images and that is with the skew. Now, a third approach is to use some different CSS. So we're not going to use the skew now syntax. We're just going to use transform, rotate Y and rotate X. Look at the difference. We've got skew Y and skew X. Over here, I've gone for minus 20 now because the minus five wasn't very strong and we've got a positive 20 degrees as well. So what that does, and I just want to give you that comparison, OK, over here, it's skewing, it stretches it a little bit, whereas here it does maintain a bit more of the proportionality. Now, again, you have to be careful. So if we go and click onto this, go to the advanced tab, go to custom CSS, and I change the rotate Y from a minus 20 to a minus 60, what it's actually doing is it moves it. So if you imagine you're looking at your page, it's creating the depth within your page. So it takes this page and it's kind of doing that. So it's creating depth going inwards. And that is what you're doing here. And if I change the rotate X to be like that, what you're now doing is you're taking the page and you're now basically again doing depth. So the first one was moving it like that. And then the second one, which is rotate X, is now taking it along that kind of axis. I do prefer using that CSS as opposed to the skew. I just feel the skew is just, you know, it just it doesn't feel right, in my opinion. There's something about it. Now, if you just have one image on its own, you can get away with the skew. But when you have like a sequence of three or four images or even more, or you have it like littered around your page, 
You know, where you have text imaged and you go image text, it does start to really jump out and jar you. And I find that this is more easier on the eye. Now, what if you don't want to use any CSS? Of course, Elemental does give you the transform effect. And I'm just showing you over here. So this now is a little bit more because what you have over here is we've just moved along the axes, right? But the length of the left side matches the right side, just like the top matches the bottom. The lengths are equal. If you look over here, can you see that this side on the left is slightly smaller than on the right? And that's because we're applying 3D rotation. So let me just go over to this particular image, Advanced Tab. Now, this does not have any custom CSS added to it. Instead, we went to the Transform and we added in Rotate. And again, this is one of those things where a lot of people don't realize you can do this. So I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to get rid of these values and we're going to get rid of the 3D Rotate. So we are back to where we were before. A lot of people will come into rotate, click it, and they kind of think, oh, well, is that all it does? And they move on. They don't realize you can 3D rotate it. Let's pop that back to zero, and we're going to activate 3D rotate. So I'm now just going to show you what happens if I start to move the rotate X. Look at that. And this is where it gets very freaky because I feel like there's a danger. I mean, look, this is very Star Wars effect now, right? Can you imagine loads of treks, text, trek, text, shouldn't say trek. Star Wars, you know, the text at the start. If you want to do that effect, you could get away with it. But this is where it starts to become a little bit unwieldy because the bigger the values, the more it stretches out. Now, I am just going to do something like that. And I'm just going to show you now that if I go and set the perspective of this to be a thousand, or let me just show you what happens as I move, increase the number. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where it starts to apply some perspectiveness to it. So can you see what it's doing there? If I shrink that down, we eventually will get the silly old stretch. Now, I'm just going to stick in a thousand. I just find a thousand for me kind of really hones in on the perspective side of it. I'll let you make your own mind of it. So I'm now going to go over here and I'm just going to put in a minus 11. So what that, that, what that has done, it has applied a, a bit of perspective along the top. So let me just show you the top or let me show you what it's like. Let's pop it back to zero. Okay. That is now equal size at the top and bottom. If I go and do minus 11, the bottom is slightly smaller than the top. OK, because look, if you look carefully, look at the grid lines. OK, can you see over there the pink outline? It's moved in a little bit. Let me just try and convince you again. If you do that, the left and right is bang up against the pink outline. And in fact, let me make it more apparent for you. OK, if I go minus 50, can you now see the perspective? So you're, you're going along the Z axis in a way, and then you're moving inwards. OK, so the sides are not equal. I'm going to pop that back to be minus 11. I hope what I'm saying makes sense. And if not, please do reach out to me. Of course, you can hire me for a one to one or go check out our courses and guides. They're going to massively help you out with building with Elementor or just website design generally because you can apply the logic to other page builders. And it doesn't have to be just WordPress as well. And you can learn a bit of CSS. Now for the bottom, the rotate Y, I'm going to apply a minus 16. But let me just show you what would happen if I did a positive 50. So it moves inwards. And this side here now is slightly smaller than the left hand side. If I was to do a minus 50, can you see, and, I'm, and I hope you appreciate it, the height of that is just about two and a half ish in terms of square sizes, whereas over here, one, two, this is more like a three. So the perspective is being applied. Now, I, for this example, went for a minus 16. You can see the values I got over there. That's actually to remind me. It's not for your benefits to remind me. And what we now get is a 3D effect. But, and I really want to stress this out, okay, just because I'm showing you this and it looks okay, I find it a little bit jarring still. So I like the functionality if you don't want to mess around with CSS, okay, you know, because sometimes skewing can be a bad thing. But I just want you to look at that rotate. Imagine you've got a hero banner with four images now. That does not jar me. You know, even though we have different colors going on there, that does not jar me. Everything is legible. Everything looks okay. This is a bit more dynamic, or I don't want to say the word dynamic because it's not a dynamic tag, but it feels more dynamic because you're getting this perspective kicking in. 
and the left side is shorter than the right side, you know, because it's going into the page almost, but you still get the 3D effect. The problem I have with this, even if you had a pure white background, even if the grid was not there, when you have lots of images, it doesn't feel right. Because of the way you get the perspective and the moving out, the distance is there and then it grows and then it goes small again. It's a little bit off-putting. Now, you could get around that by setting the rotate X to be a zero and we'll leave it as minus 16. And if I just go and apply that to all of these over here, again, though, even though it's not now kind of tilted a little bit, I find that when you're looking at something like that, and, and I would love to see your read your comments here, because we get this like big to small and then it goes back to big again, I find it off-putting. I really do. It kind of jars me and it would work absolutely fine on a single image. This is just me being very subjective as to how I feel when I start to see 3D effects. I've popped it back to be the minus 11. So you make your own decision. You can either stick with normal flat images. You could add in a bit of skew. Bear in mind, though, it will skew what's in there. And if your values are too big, it will look ridiculous. You could add in a bit of rotate, which is more uniform, especially with the distances and the way it looks. Or if you don't mind, go with a little bit of perspective and you don't need to add in any CSS. Just go and use the inbuilt uh, styling settings you have. Now, if you were going to do what we have over here in terms of CSS, it gets a little bit complicated because you have to add CSS to the container that contains this to allow the depth or the 3D effect. Then you have to add in quite a bit of CSS to get this to all look right. And you might need to add in a third bit of CSS somewhere else then to make it again look right. You're better off just using the style settings over here. But again, you know, have a think, have a look at it, play around with it. But I do prefer the third option. Do you have a preference? The first one, which means you don't want any image perspective rotation skewing going on at all. Do you like skew? Do you like rotate? Or are you just going to use the transform of all the perspective 3D rotation? I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you found that quite informative. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. And of course, I'm going to keep seeing you.